Hi, I'm Slam Gaming. Last night at 10 p.m., I sat down at my desk and started up Pokemon Scarlet and Violet's new DLC, the Teal Mask. About five hours later, I stood up and stretched my legs, done with the main story of the DLC. Here's everything that happened in between. Congratulations! You have been randomly selected to be one of this year's participants in a joint program with the Blueberry Academy, another Pokemon school. As a side note, Blueberry Academy is actually located in the Unova region, but that's definitely not a hint towards Gen 5 remakes or a Legends game. Definitely not. The program consists of a trip to Kitakami, a region far away from Paldea. I don't think they ever specify if it's its own region or part of another region, so I'll continue to call it a region, but just know that. When you're ready, you and your fellow randomly selected, definitely not the most NPC people you've ever seen classmates, will depart for a new adventure. After a long plane flight and an even longer bus ride, you arrive in Kitakami. One of your classmates has motion sickness, so Miss Briar, your chaperone and a teacher at the Blueberry Academy, sends you ahead to get help. Masui Town, the main settlement of Kitakami, is just ahead. Before you can get help, you battle one of the residents of the town. She seems to have a bit of an anger issue. After defeating Carmine, you get help for your classmate, and the school trip begins in earnest. Carmine and her shy little brother Kiran are students at the Blueberry Academy, and also a part of the trip. They are originally from Masui, however, so this is more of a visit home for them. The main goal of the school trip is to partner up with a student from the other school and take selfies in front of three signboards around the region. Each sign tells a bit of the story of Kitakami's history. Also, there's a selfie stick, so that's cool. It turns out Kiran already admires you and wants to team up, but it takes a little initiative from Carmine to make it happen which means she somehow embarrasses him into joining you? Whatever works, I suppose. At the first signboard, you learn that Kitakami was once attacked by a fearsome ogre, and only with the combined efforts of the loyal three, Okidogi, Monkey Dory, and Bazan Depiti, that one's still hard to say, were they able to turn away the ogre. However, this came at the cost of their lives, and they are now buried near the village. Kiran, for what it's worth, isn't buying that the ogre was ever that evil, and even sort of idolizes the creature of legend. The second signboard is at Kitakami Hall, a sort of dual sacred celebration area. The sign there expands upon the story of the ogre, saying that it used to wield four different masks, each one imbuing it with a different power. The loyal three were able to wrest away three of them before they perished, leaving the ogre weakened greatly. Kiron can't stop fanboying over the ogre and offers to take you up to where it supposedly lives on the mountain. After absolutely beating the doors off of Kiron in an attempt to summon the ogre, it's an unsuccessful attempt, you visit Kiron's home in town. Apparently, tonight is the first night of the Festival of Masks, Kitakami's celebration of the defeat of the ogre long ago. You get some sick new festival drip and make your way to Kitakami Hall. Everyone there is wearing masks, except for you. Towards the end of the night, you see what appears to be a lost little boy. It runs from you, but as it does, its mask falls off, revealing that it is actually Ogre Pond, the Ogre of Legend. You collect the mask, damaged now from its tumble. Carmine also sees this happen, but she forbids you from telling Kiron about it. He is too obsessed with the Ogre, learning that it is real would probably do more harm than good. The next day, you and Carmine talk with Carmine's grandfather about last night. Not only is he a local historian, he is a mask maker. Hint, hint. Maybe he can help repair the mask. At the house, Carmine coldly sends off Kiron. 
being mean just to keep him in the dark. After Kiran leaves, the grandfather reveals that the story of Kitakami's heroes is wrong. Long ago, Ogre Pond and a man tried to come to the village, but were rejected for being strange. A kind villager, the Mask Maker, made them the four sacred masks so that they could enter the town festival freely. But the loyal three rock up to town one day and try to steal the masks, motivated by greed. They take three of the masks, presumably disposing of the man who was the ogre's friend in the process. When Ogre Pond returns home, it dons the last remaining mask, the Teal Mask, and goes to the village for answers. Once there, it defeats the loyal three in an act of righteous vengeance. But the villagers have no clue what's happening, and think that Ogre Pond is attacking them. You can see the confusion, and now all these years later, Ogre Pond is the bad guy. Also, as a side note, the original mask maker in the story is actually the ancestor of Kiran and Carmine. But Kiran still doesn't know that. Or does he? It's revealed that Kiran was listening in on the whole conversation and now knows everything. But he doesn't reveal that to you all just yet. In fact, you even lie right to his face when he already knows the truth. It's pretty cold. You find the last signboard with Kiran where he demands a battle with you. He's more determined this time, but not in the most stable way, if that makes sense. He's very concerned with being too weak. The last board is just fear-mongering about the ogre. It's nothing really new. Kiran's angst is growing by the day. Meanwhile, you and Carmine head to the top of the mountain to get a crystal cluster, something needed to fix Ogre Pond's mask. You fight a giant Milotic there and find the cluster. Miss Briar rolls up and makes some remarks about terrestrialization, but that's clearly more of a part two of the DLC kind of thing. Once you return to Carmine's grandfather with the cluster, he reveals that Kiron stole it. Once you find Kiron, he reveals to you his eavesdropping earlier, and is relating to Ogre Pond more than ever. The betrayal he feels is one that shames him, makes him feel unwanted. It's surprisingly effective. Kiron's sense of directionless anger and angst really jumps off of the screen. After defeating him, you get the mask back, but not before Kiron accidentally reopens the grave of the Loyal Three in anger. Newly back to life, they dash off to Kitakami Hall, where the clueless villagers are happy to see their saviors back in action. The three take the other masks of Ogre Pond and dash off again, presumably just go beat up Ogre Pond. You rush to save the ogre, and send the loyal three off to different corners of the map. Ogre Pond decides to tag along, and Kiron even apologizes, but in a way where he is also still clearly jealous of how much Ogre Pond likes you. You and Carmine track down the loyal three and defeat each one of them in turn, retrieving a mask from each one. Also, they ate special mochi and are the size of Titan Pokemon now, just so you know. After getting the third and final mask, Kiron reveals that in the meantime, he has convinced everyone in the village of the truth, and they welcome Ogre Pond with open arms, making everything right again. But we're not done yet. When you try to return Ogre Pond home, it indicates that it would rather travel with you as a Pokemon in your team. Kiron has had enough of the hero shtick, and demands a battle to see who gets to take Ogre Pond. You beat him, and then battle Ogre Pond itself to prove yourself one last time. After defeating Ogre Pond, you capture it, and it finally seems like things are right again. One obligatory final battle with Carmine, and she reveals how happy she actually is that you two met. The program in Kitakami is over, and all is well. Well, almost all is well. Kiran, notably, is not doing well. He doesn't show for the end of the program, and is instead cloistered in his room, muttering to himself about power and revenge. Then he flashes a classic villain smile before the big do not continue words flash on the screen. And that's it. That's the entirety of the main thrust of the Teal Mask's story. I'm going to talk about my thoughts on it soon, but overall I really really enjoyed it. If you enjoyed my recap, please consider dropping a like or even subscribing. I bring a lot of Pokemon content to the table, and I'm going to be making more content specifically about the DLC. And thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day. See you next time.